Welcome back to The Band Guide, where we use GarageBand to create professional sounding music. I'm your band guide, Colin, and one of the best ways to feel more confident, comfortable, and creative in any DAW is to use shortcuts. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you my top 12 shortcuts that I use every single time I'm in GarageBand. Let's dive in. All right, so we're inside GarageBand, and before we get into these, I just wanna say, this is definitely not the coolest thing you're ever gonna learn, but stick with me, watch this whole video, and try these out, because I guarantee if you implement these, it's gonna save you a lot of time. Let's say, for example, every time you hit play, you always navigate to the play button, and every time you pause, you have to navigate to the pause and hit pause. If you have a quick shortcut that allows you to do that much faster, yes, each individual time might not really be noticeable, but you add that up over every time you do it, let's say you do it 100 times in a session, 1,000 times in a session, those little bits add up a lot. Add these to all these different shortcuts. The faster you can do things, the faster you can create, and the more creative you'll be, I guarantee it. So these will really help you out, not just in GarageBand, but as you learn them for any DAW that you ever work in, will really help you out. So stick with me here. The first one, as I said, definitely not the coolest, but definitely the one I use the most, and that is save, command S. Every time you need to save your session, just hit command S. You should do this like a thousand times a session. Try a new EQ, you like it, save it. Record something, save it. Edit something, save it. Just save all the time and then you never have to worry. Yes, there's autosave functions, but then you just never have to worry if you're maybe losing anything. Save all the time. All right, the next year about moving around inside GarageBand. The first one is play pause. So the space bar is a play pause button. So you can play and pause with the space bar much faster. Again, if I were to navigate to the play button every time, move away, oh, then I gotta go stop it, navigate back to it, find it. If you just hit play, pause, much faster every time. And your cursor might be in a different place, but that space bar is always gonna be in the same place. So use play pause with the space bar. My third shortcut is to move the playhead to the start of the session. So if we just hit return, that automatically moves the playhead and the view to the start of the session. This is super important if you're recording and you keep messing up or you just wanna get a few more takes or you just wanna, you already have the idea down, you wanna move into it really quickly, hit return that's gonna move you to the beginning of the session immediately. Now, one issue with this is now let's hit space, to play, and it moves us to wherever our cycle region is set, our loop region, right? This little yellow here that's set here, this little loop region we see there, that is going to automatically play back to there every time. So if I hit return and I realize that I have that on, well then I can just hit C to turn that off, and now it's gonna play from the very, very beginning. If I hit C again, it's gonna turn it back on and I can toggle this on and off. So while it's playing even, I can turn it on. It's not gonna affect it while it's on, but let's say I start it again, and I realize, oh, I don't want this to cycle. I want this to play out now. I can see it's gonna turn it off. Really handy. Definitely something I use all the time as I'm moving around in my session. The next one, again, moving around in the session, is all about zooming. So there is this little zoom function up here, and that's fine, but again, you gotta navigate to it, you gotta move around it. Another way you can do that is if you hit command and arrow left or right, left will be zoom out, right will be zoom in, much, much faster, so you could easily just do this quickly. My favorite way is actually option, and then if you have a side scroll. So I'm using a trackpad here. If I side scroll left and right, Left is gonna zoom in, right is gonna zoom out. So holding option and scrolling also does this. This is particularly great if you just wanna zoom in on something and see, oh, did I hit that right on the beat? I did, okay, so I'm good. You can zoom in and out really quickly and it will also typically zoom right wherever the cursor or playhead is, is placed. Or just navigate around in your session. Let's say I just wanna go back and I only really wanna look at verse one. Well, I can look at verse one easily by just zooming in here, zoom back out. Go over to this chorus here, easy. All right, my sixth shortcut is all about bringing up maybe the most important window in your session, and that's your smart control window. This is how you control your plugins. And ultimately your plugins are a huge part of how good your song is gonna end up sounding, right? So EQ in particular, you should have EQ on not necessarily all of your tracks, but a lot of your tracks. All you need to do to pull this up is hit B, and that's gonna open up your smart control window for whatever track you have selected. So keep that in mind. We're only gonna be seeing the smart control window for whichever track we have selected. So if I am on the Tom, 
and I have this EQ up, and then I click up on the kick drum here, then it's gonna switch over to whatever pre plugins and smart control window features I see on that track. You should be pulling this up and playing around with plugins a lot in the mixing phase. So you'll wanna regularly be pulling up your smart control windows. And then if you hit B, it just hides it right away. Next shortcut is solo. You can solo by going over here and clicking on the solo button here, but again, you have to navigate to that. That takes a little bit of time. If you just hit S on the keyboard, that will solo whatever track you have selected. But let's say you're on this kick and you wanna hit S to solo it, and you wanna solo all of your drums. Well, that goes hand in hand with the next shortcut, which is the up and down arrows will move you throughout your track selection, right? So if I hit my down arrow, it will now move me down to the snare. If I hit it again, it's gonna keep moving me down. I can move up and down in my tracks with the up and down arrows. Add these two together, and all of a sudden, I could quickly solo all of my drums in just a second. That is a lot faster than going through and clicking, having to target each one of these, right? So if I just quickly solo each of them, bam. And then we can listen to all those tracks together soloed really quickly. Awesome, right? Super fast. All right, the next one has to do with something kind of related. So we have tracks, which are these on the left, and then we have regions, all our different audio or MIDI regions. Now we can only have one track selected at a time in GarageBand. So I can move up and down with one selection at a time that will typically select the audio regions or MIDI regions in that track. But let's say I wanted to select all these drums. There's two ways that you can do this. The first, if you have an area where you haven't recorded, if you drag, just click and drag, it will give you kind of like a selector window and then it will select anything that you have uh, in that. This is a great way if you want to select all the tracks in your song really quickly or in a situation like this where I can see the edge where I don't have anything recorded over here, not a problem. But let's say I am zoomed in and I can't see any area that I could easily click and drag in or I just wanna select a few tracks that are right up against each other or maybe not even right next to each other. Let's say I just wanted my kick and the, my snare reverb for some reason. Well, if I click and hold shift, then every track I now click will all be selected together. So if you wanted to skip a couple, you could do that with this. You could unselect them once you've selected them. If you are still holding shift and clicking, then it will unselect as well. So I could select all my drums here in one fell swoop. Now there's a few reasons you would do this, but one of the main reasons would go hand in hand with my next shortcut, which is to split. You could split audio, you could split MIDI, split all sorts of things, but splitting just allows us to now edit. We could delete things if we split, so if we have a lot of breathing in the vocals right before he goes into the vocal line, you could split right before he starts his line and cut those, those breaths out. Or in this case, let's say, let's go to the this drum part right here. Let's say I played this part of the drums better than I played this part, or I played this rhythm right and I don't play this rhythm right. Well, if they're in time, then what I can do is just hit Command T and that's gonna split my audio. And then I can move my playhead, I could bring it up here, hit Command T again. And now I've split out this little region of audio. I could hit Shift and click through, select all of these. And now I could copy and paste this audio to the next section, which brings me to my next shortcut copy and paste. Now there's a few ways to copy and paste. The most common way is just Command C to copy and then Command V to paste. Now your Command V will paste wherever you have your playhead placed. So if I were to move it back here, it's now gonna paste right there. Wherever you put your playhead, that's where it's gonna paste. My preferred way to copy and paste is typically actually to hold Option with the keyboard and click and drag. So that just copy and pasted that audio. I could click and drag this to anywhere if I wanted to move it all the way over here then I don't have to set my playhead. I don't have to copy and paste. I haven't copied this at all. All I've done is selected it, option, click and drag, and it copies and pastes and places wherever I set it much, much faster. So option, click, drag is definitely my preferred way to copy and paste. You could do this too. Let's say I just wanted to take this one section right here and move it down to this track. I can option, click and drag that way too. And that brings me to probably my second most used shortcut, which is undo. So let's say I decided, oh, I don't actually want to have done this thing that I just did. If I hit Command Z, that's gonna undo whatever our last function was, right? So Command Z will undo. A little bonus for you is that Shift Command Z will redo. So let's say I wanna undo those edits, Command Z, Command Z, and I'm like, oh, actually I want that last one. 
command shift command Z and it will bring that last edit back. Very, very helpful, very handy. A little bonus for you, I use this one a lot too. Didn't quite make my top 12, but it's my 13th. Didn't want to have a lucky, unlucky 13th is Command X. Command X will delete, right? So this is really handy uh, for a few reasons, but mostly just because location, because my hand is already in this Command uh, T range, right, to split. So let's say I just wanted to cut out some silence, like just the sound of the guitar amp in this big section here. I have my track selected. I hit Command T to trim. I go over to the start of the section. You'd want to listen to this and make sure you're trimming it right. Command T right before. Select the region that I want to delete. And then instead of hitting Delete, if I just hit Command X, my fingers are already right there at the Command T, Command X realm, right? So I can quickly just Command T to split, Command X to delete. Fun fact about this is that it actually copies it. So it deletes it from there, but then if I wanted to paste it somewhere else, I could hit Command V and it's actually copied that. I typically only use this really as a delete function, but that is good to know if you wanted to quickly delete and move something over, you selected a lot of tracks and you wanted to cut them, but then go over here and paste them. You could do that very quickly in one, two finger combination, shortcut combination, really, really fast. So that's my top 12 kind of 13 shortcuts that I use literally every time I open GarageBand. But now I want to hear from you. What shortcuts do you use all the time in your GarageBand? Maybe R to record? I don't do a lot of recording in GarageBand, so that wasn't one I use all the time, but it might be one that you use all the time. Again, it's going to be faster than going to that uh, record button every time you need to hit that. Now, if you've made it to the end of this video all about shortcuts in GarageBand, I know you're serious about making professional sounding music in GarageBand, and I want to give you something to help with that. I've put together a six step checklist to a pro mix in GarageBand. It's the exact same six steps that all professional mixes have and how you can do them inside GarageBand. It's completely free. There's a link in the description below for this video. It will really help you get a more professional sounding mix in GarageBand completely free. So be sure to grab that from the link in the description below. If this video was helpful, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next week with another video.